It's another beautiful day out there once again. Welcome to the Potter's Gate online broadcast. This is the day that the Lord has made, the 24th of the month of December, 2022. We want to honor God this morning once again for his mercy and his love for our lives. We want to appreciate him for his eternal mercy that never fails. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness towards us. I guess somebody always likes to hear my voice in the morning before the person leaves. All right, the person connects and then the person just leaves immediately. Well, it's good to know that somebody likes to hear my voice for the next uh, few seconds and then turn off. Well, I want to welcome you this morning once again. I believe the Lord to help us to continue to press into his heart, into his mind, into his desire and into his intention. This morning, as we continue to look into the intentions of God for our life, I pray that the Spirit of God will give us, amen, a deeper and a clearer perspective in terms of his intentions for our life. Wherever you are, wherever you'll be joining us from this morning, it's another great honor to share this moment with you, to share this great platform with you, and of course, to bring the heart of God and the mind of God to you wherever you are. It's an honor to be alive and to be part of this wonderful, blessed moment in time. Let us pray. Father, we honor you. We praise you. We exalt you. We magnify you. Our heart rejoice in you, even as we reminisce on the things that you have done for us, that you're doing in us, through us. Thank you, Father, for your will that will be established, your counsel that will be fulfilled. Thank you, Father, for your truth that will not fail, your word that will not change. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not a stroke of your word will go unfulfilled. So, Father, this morning, as we begin once again our journey further into your heart, into your mind, may you grant us, O oh God, yes, the commitment, O oh God, the focus, the determination, and most of the courage to continue to press into the issues of your kingdom. As we look into your word once again this morning, may this word, yes, adjust our perspective. May this word realign us. May this word, oh God, yes, bring us to that point and place where we can better see and embrace what you are demanding and requiring of us. But more so, may we live a life of worship. May everything that our life represents bring worship unto you, bring glory, bring praises, bring joy unto you, for this is our desire. And so we thank you this morning. We honor you, God, as we look into, yes, the, 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 the things that you are saying to us regarding your truth, regarding your word. Oh, Father, may we be cleansed. May we be washed. May we be sanctified. Because indeed, that is what we believe you are doing in this period where we've been through a, a, a seasons of all kinds of challenges and issues some that have left all kinds of stains and dents and, and compromises in our life. But once again, you're calling us to the place of the pool. You're calling us to the place of the washing. You're calling us to surrender and submit, yes, Lord, to, yes, to the cleansing of your truth, to the cleansing of your word. I pray in the name of Jesus that as you cleanse us, as you purify us, that we will truly be ready for what is ahead of us. And like your word says that you have indeed opened a door, a great door before us. And we know as it is done in the tradition of the Orient, that before you enter into a house, before you enter into or access, uh, you know, a, a place a pe where a people gather. There's a need for cleansing of the of the of the feet. Yes, removing the dust. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, that as we are about to step into the next phase, the next thing that you're doing, the next thing that you are speaking, Lord, we submit ourselves to your cleansing. We submit ourselves, yes, to purification. We submit ourselves to washing. We submit ourselves, oh God, yes, Lord, to sanctification. Yes, we want to be cleansed. I want to be cleansed. We don't want to go presuming or assuming. We don't want to get there and we are told that we are disqualified, unqualified. We want to access every door, every season that you have designed for us. We want to be a company of them, yes, Lord, who are entering your kingdom. He said, except the man be except the man be baptized of the water, he cannot enter. Lord, we have seen now we want to enter through the ministry of the washing. It's called baptism. 
We thank you this morning that your spirit will continue to impress upon our heart the need for us to be cleansed cleanse from our conscience cleanse oh god yes from our our desires oh god desire wrong desire cleanse from attitude cleanse from all kinds of characters and whatever it is that we have embraced that would not allow us to go further to go yonder to proceed further with you so we thank you this morning that you continue to do your work in us and through us we bless you May your word continue to minister to us. We sit at the feet of your word this morning. As the word gets into this euphoria of celebration, we understand that there is one celebration that you have call, called us into. And this celebration is a continual thing. It's a revelation, yes, of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's, the, it's a revelation of what he has done and what he is doing. And what is yet to do. So we thank you oh God. We celebrate with our brothers and sisters out there. Those preparing for Christmas and all of that. We celebrate with them. But we pray oh God that you will bring them to a deeper and a clearer understanding. That this journey is beyond just one day set aside to celebrate your birth. We know almighty God that these are issues that we need to be awakened to as we mature in you. Help us to know that Christmas is not just about a day. It's about your redemptive work. It's about you loving the world and you sending your only begotten son. And that son is no longer in some manger. Even though that reality of the manger is a message for us today. We thank you that in humility you've proved to us that when we submit to the ministry of the, of the Father and allow your wisdom and knowledge to guide us because that's what Jesus Christ came to show us. He didn't just come to die. He didn't just come to be born into this world. He taught us humility. He said, all the glory that I have, I left it to the Father and he came in the form of man. He was born. Help us to understand to learn, oh God, from the teachings that is being celebrated in this period in time. May it be a teaching that allows to grow and develop, oh God, and not some religious rituals that we do every year, oh God, being captured by the spirit of capitalism. Yes, help us, Father, to know the reality of this call to journey further, that we live beyond the Christmas that the birth of Christ is what we celebrate daily. That his death, his resurrection, his ascension is part of the revelation of our life and growth until we come to the place of the Telios. We honor you, Father. We bless your name. May your kingdom continue to come into all the areas of our life where we are blind, where we are seeking light, where we are seeking understanding. May we not, O oh God, yes, fall into the lies and the deception out there that is called religion and traditions of men. Captured by the spirits of humanistic system. Clothed, yes, in capitalism. Or may we understand the economy of your kingdom. <laughs> may we understand the economy of your kingdom. May we live beyond the euphoria of a period, an event. May we see life. May we understand, oh God, that how we live life will define and determine, yes, your coming. Oh Father, may we understand that we can accelerate your coming because we walk in the conscious reality of this moment in time. Father, help us. Help us. Awaken us as you continue to speak to us. Yes. Many of us are still sleeping. We are sleeping. We, we become, yes, a, 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 a capture in the depth of slumber when what we believe, it's a lie. Awaken us. Awaken us. So we can become a voice, a true voice. So we can become true vessels, true servants. So we can become men and women who are true proclaimers of the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. Oh, awaken our hearts. Help us. 
Grant us the grace to come to the place of the washing. Help us, O oh God, to bow before you and let you cleanse us and wash us so indeed we can be ready. You said you have opened before us a great door. We want to access, we want to enter that door. But we cannot enter with all these baggages of religion, of traditions, of customs. We cannot, when all we are dealing with, oh God, are still things that are outside the peripheries. Things that are within the fringes of the reality of life. Show us how to live life in this season and time. Show that woman, show that man, oh God, what it means to be a follower of Christ. Not just marking time. Help us to understand what, yes, Christ is and Christ means. Help us to understand. So we cannot be deceived. So we will not be deceived. So we will not go the ways of the world. So we will not fall into slumber. This is the burden of my heart. And I've carried this body for decades. And I'll continue. For this part, oh God, you have shown me. And may I continue to walk in it, oh God. Awaken us, awaken us, awaken us. Friends, welcome once again. Thank you, my sister, for joining this morning. Really appreciate it. And any other person listening to me, wherever you are, wherever you join us from, all right? And those that will be watching or connecting, you know, to us from United States of America, we want to celebrate this moment with everybody across the world. Amen. But more so, we want to celebrate Christ. Amen. Christ in exalted amen seated at the right hand of the father this morning we want to continue to look at something that i began to touch on yesterday even though i didn't finish it i thought i should go back to that scripture because uh we're looking at something yesterday uh jesus was speaking in fact he was praying in 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 john 17 and i thought that is such a profound prayer all right that uh we need to go back and look at again uh if you have your bible just open to john 17 again let's look at john 17 and i'll take it from verse 16 and i'll go down to verse uh, uh 17 and 18 all right in john 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 17 verse 16 it says they are not of the world well Let's not even begin to go into all of that because I spoke a bit of that yesterday. They are not of the world. What does that mean? They are not of the world. Mind you, we're coming to the point this morning where I'm going to be dealing with the issues, amen, of sanctification. All right? That's what I, what I want us to focus on. But it's important that we also look at scripture within context. Jesus is praying here. This is one of his last prayer for his church, for his, you know, for his disciples, of course, and by extension, us. He says, they are not of the world. And like I said yesterday, but Jesus Christ came, amen, to die for the world. He came, amen, to share his life for the world so that the world can come into, yes, the truth can, can be awakened into that the spirit of his redemptive power, yes. And he had to do certain things. But the truth is, he said, they are not of the world. Basically, what he's saying is, amen, the value that defines these people is not of this world. The belief system, the understanding of, of these people who have come to me, who have chosen to follow me, amen, is not of this world. So there is something called this world. And we need to know what that is, particularly in this period. People call, amen, uh, uh, celebrating, celebration time, Christmas time. You need to know what the world is because the world celebrates Christmas. You celebrate, amen, Christ. The way the world celebrates Christmas. Because celebrating Christ and celebrating Christmas are two different things. <laughs> and I'm not even going to go into all of that this morning. Amen. We've been talking about that for years. And we'll continue to talk about it as the Spirit of the Lord leads us. Because the moment you wake up to the reality, amen, that it is the celebration of Christ. The Christ that has been forming you. Not the Christ, amen, religion gives to you. Not the one passed down to you, amen. Yes, by, by the ideologies of men, amen, that is not connected to some purpose that is driving you. Suddenly, you know, Christmas time, a lot of people just wake up, then suddenly they become Christians. <laughs> Come on. We've passed that season. We've passed that season. Not after all that have happened in COVID and all of that. And I know that there is a spirit, there is a system out there. Yes, that wants to that wants to cancel you know Christmas and Christianity. And I understand all of that. Amen. And for that reason, yes, we will talk about Christmas and all of that. But beyond all of this idea, 
it's all about capitalism. It's all about economy. And I'm not into all of that. There's an economy that drives my life. Anybody listening to me, if you know, you know where I stand. All right? if, you're a, if you're a servant of God, you're a minister of God, and you don't know where you stand, and you have not allowed people to know where you stand, including your own family member or friends or colleague in ministry, then you're, you're standing on nothing. And it's important we continue to continue to you know uh, uh, speak on this on this on this point so that people know where we stand. People know what we stand for. At least those who know me, amen, they will tell you one thing: Isaiah is not it's not in in and there. I know where I stand, and I stand by it as long as that thing aligns with the word of God. If what I stand on, amen, does not align with the word of God, I'll be the first to reject it. I am that quick to learn. But what, what I have come to understand and I'm persuaded by the truth, by the word of God, guess what? You can't change my mind over it. A million, a million and one person cannot change my mind over it because that is what has guided me and led me to the point that I am today that I've become at least to certain people a voice. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't wish at this point to begin to compromise, amen, that, that, that position that God has given to me, all right? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's continue. I just felt somebody needed to hear that. Yeah. Truth will always set you free. Truth will set you free. If the truth you are hearing cannot set you free, then it's not the truth. You know, I like it that when I speak the truth, people leave. Because I can see it. those who follow me, those who don't follow me, I can see it. I can see those who connect, who doesn't connect. I don't know them, but I can see the number increases, it drops. There's nothing to hide about that. You can see that. All right. Like I said, every time I begin to broadcast, somebody will always come and just immediately, immediately. And after a few seconds, that person leaves. It's like the person is just watching. And I, you know, when I was praying, I think the spirit of the Lord, I believe the spirit of the Lord dropped the name of that person into my spirit. And she's a woman of God. But she lives in a lie and deceit. You can't live in a lie and a deceit. You can't be chasing people in their shadows. Or living in the shadows. You can't do that. That is uncalled for. That is not godly. Hey friends, this is the day of the kingdom. It's a day of prophetic insight and understanding. When you walk with God, it will open your eyes. It will, it will help you to see. It will help you to understand. Amen. That's what Christianity is all about. That's what the kingdom of life. We can see what is behind the, the curtain. We can see behind what is behind the curtain. We can see behind what is in the curtain. So you can't say, well, I'm hiding, you know, at my, you, you can't be hiding, amen, behind your, 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 your device and you think nobody sees you. You lie. Somebody lied to you. You lie to yourself. <laughs> If the things that we're talking about cannot give us insight and understanding and revelation, please throw your Bible away and go look for something else. Because this thing is true and it works. If you have the Spirit of God in you, the Spirit of God will confirm. The Spirit of God will affirm. The Spirit of God will give you clarity and direction. Yes, this is called the zeal of the prophet. This is called the zeal of the prophet. It's time we stop living in deceit. It's time we stop lying to ourselves. It's time we stop, hallelujah, fooling people. It's time to remove the veneer. It's time we remove the veneer. So we, so we can see things in their true light. God is calling us. There are issues God is dealing with in my own life. Just like a man, there are issues he's dealing with in your own life. If you don't surrender yourself in truth, in humility, in openness of heart, you will be, listen to this, by 2030, you will still be living in 2022. Oh, they will be saying, oh, we're in 2030, but your understanding, you will still be, you will still be here. Because listen to this, we don't move by calendar, we move by, amen, yes, the seasons of God and how we respond to that season. When God's season changes and they demand that we move, we move. Like I said, some time ago, some of us are not living in 2022. I'm not moved. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, li I'm not living in a calendar year. I'm, al I'm already in 2023. I'm just waiting, amen, for 31st. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here. You, you understand this? You've got to know that. 
if 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 you are still waiting for 20 uh, 2023 before you begin to initiate and 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 activate certain things that the lord is requiring of you i hope you understand that god does not live amen yes in your in your in your chronos in your calendar month god doesn't live there but he uses amen calendar to help you plan to help you amen align and to help you decide so that when you move you move in accordance to amen yes the directions of the spirit all right. But God doesn't leave. He's not bound, amen, to our time. He's not bound to our seasons. He's not bound to 25th, amen. He's not bound to, you know, uh, uh, Christmas Day 25th. What do you think that means to God? Man initiates that. That that is not that is not that is not you know an emblem or you know a, a, a pass you know for your spiritual journey. What does 25th mean to you? What does that celebration means to you? Come on. It's time to remove the veil and stop deceiving yourself. What are you going to preach tomorrow to people? Or next tomorrow, whatever, you know, you're going to be preaching. Or that Jesus was born in a manger and all of that. Excuse me. This is the third day. Wake up. I'm speaking to the men of God and the women of God watching me this morning. Wake up and preach the kingdom to the people and set them free. Yes, you're watching me. I know you're watching me. You're listening. Yes, we, you will leave, but you will come back because the Spirit of God will tell you, go back and listen to that man. You better listen to the voice of the Spirit because listen to this. If you don't listen, somebody will replace you next year. Somebody will take your place next year because the Lord is no longer joking. He's no longer playing with us. It's time we get our acts together. This is why this platform has been set. It's not set for me to come and tell you what I like. This is not a gospel of, of money. I'm not waiting for you to pay me so that I can tell you what you want to hear. You bless me, you don't bless me. The kingdom of God advances. The kingdom of God. God always fund his work. You like it, you don't like it. That's that's your own that's your own issue. There are still people who want to hear the truth. And we seek to preach the truth, amen, with the balance scale. We seek to preach the truth with the balance scale. They are not of this world. The idea you have of the world is totally different from what the what the word of God is saying. When God talks about the world, you better ask him, what do you mean by that? They are not of the world. So there's a demarcation. There's a separation. What demarcates you? What separates you? When you don't understand, hallelujah, the vision of God for any aspect of life, how do you drive a, man, a purpose to fulfill such a vision? When we don't understand what God is saying, you know, I was reading, in fact, I wasn't reading, I was listening to my book, amen, on uh, 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 um, the gospel of the kingdom. And I'm just like, I couldn't sleep. God, help me, help me here. This gospel, amen, had been preached even before Jesus was born. And when Jesus Christ came, have you noticed Jesus preached the gospel? He preached the gospel of the kingdom. He didn't even preach his own birth. There's something far bigger, far beyond amen, our imagination, our understanding. And we let religion lock us in some little, you know, tradition. And we, we quote it, we, we quote it with doctrines, little doctrines, pet doctrines, we call them. And then everybody start going around that same mountain. Every year we come back to the Mecca and celebrate the same thing. Every year, in and out, in and out, we're not moving forward. We are just wasting time rounding the same mountain. There is no advancement. For, 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 for years, people have been rounding Sinai. Nobody's heading towards Zion. Nobody's leaving the cave and come to the hill of the Lord. There has to be a holy indignation rising in your heart and mind. In periods like this, suddenly you don't see some believers again. You don't see them again. The world has captured them all in the name of his December, his Christmas. They are into all kinds of jargons. All kinds of things that has nothing, that has nothing to do with the advancement of the kingdom of God. But they are busy. 
But they are busy. They are busy. Then you start seeing them show up. Towards the end of January, February, by them, they have realized, wait a minute, I need to get up. And this is why, amen, this word is coming to us at this moment in time. Because, you know, from January to this moment in time, we have gone through all kinds of things. We face all kinds of, you know, you know, issues. If you are part of, you know, people journeying and transiting with God, I can assure you, yes, you've made mistakes. You've been, you've been, you've been, you've been bruised. You've been battered. Amen. You've been hit in certain point and place where you react back. Yes. And this is why God is calling us to the point where we need to be cleansed. But I'm just establishing, amen, some some facts that will allow us to understand why we need to be cleansed. Because it says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is the truth. What is the truth? That's my point this morning. I'm not here to bash you on Christmas. But I'm just speaking as a, as the indignation of God, amen, falls upon me. I'm speaking as one call, amen, to function in the office, amen, of a prophet. And I will speak. Have you noticed that true prophets are not always liked? I'm not even seeking for anyone to like me. Just like the truth. If you like the truth, you will like me. If you love the truth, you will love me. See, there are two different things between love and like. At least if you like the truth, you will like me. And if you love the truth, you will love me. Because all I stand for is the truth. Nothing else but the truth. I preach the truth to my own detriment. Yes. Because nothing else matters in this world. The truth is what drives my motivation. Is what drives my life. Is what motivates. You know, if, if you have not discovered the purpose of why you've been given a vision. If, if, if you have not discovered, what do I mean by that? All right? If you're doing something and you have not come to the understanding of the purpose that drives that vision, you are going to compromise. Wait, let pressure come. There are certain pressure, amen, that will be consistent. And before you know it, you're compromising. But you see, once the vision God gives to you, once you understand the dream of the Father, once you understand the vision of God, hallelujah, and you are able to be schooled, listen to me, you are able to be schooled, hallelujah, in the purpose that drive. Listen to this. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Every one of us must understand the dream of God. God has a dream for you. He has a dream for me. He has a dream, amen, for, you know, for creation. Once you understand that dream, then they begin to school you, hallelujah, in the purpose that brings that dream of vision into reality. Every vision has got, has got a driving purpose. You see, purpose is a dangerous thing when you do not understand the dream of God. When you don't understand the, the, you know, the vision of God. Vision is the essence for purpose. Not desire. Desire can change. <laughs> Persuasion can change. You see, purpose must come from a point, amen, of, of an ideology, amen, that cannot change. When you are committed, and that is why, amen, the two institutions that God established to birth, to carry out, amen, his dream for creation, amen, yes, has been compromised. The first one is marriage. The second one is the church, the ecclesia. Those two have been compromised. So, if we want to get it right, amen, we have to go back, hallelujah, to what is God's, God's, God's intention. Yes, I was thinking, I was thinking about, I was, <laughs> let me tell you this, I was in the loop this morning, I was just doing the thing, and it occurred to me, so you think you're ready for marriage. And the word that came to my spirit is, what will be the purpose of that marriage? If you think you're ready for something, what is the purpose for that thing? How do you know that thing? Then you must understand, amen, that it is the vision of God for that, for that thing, if you will. Marriage, if you will. A church. What, what, I'm, what do I mean by a church? When God brings people together. It brings people together. It brings stones together. Living stones together. Amen. Yes. For a reason. Within a community, within a society. You understand? Then he sets out a purpose to fulfill that. That is why people who are into Al-Qaeda, who are into jihadists, all right, they will go and bomb themselves. 
You better, you better understand that it's a purpose that is driving them. A purpose drives somebody to wear a suicide vest. That purpose is born out of an idea, ideology. You're going to die. See, that's why be careful how you arm a purpose that is not connected to divine intention. Oh Lord, I'm alive this morning. Be careful how you arm. Because purpose can be a leather weapon. It can make you and it can destroy you. Once, once you attach a purpose to anything, be careful. Why do you think cultism? Amen thrives. Why do you think manipulation thrives in the church? Why do you think false prophets, false apostles thrive? I heard one man of God said, during COVID, COVID, during COVID, he said he bought a jet plane during COVID. And he was saying it, amen, with all persuasion. During COVID, I bought jet plane. And I looked at this man and said, wow. And the people were hailing him. Why were they hailing him? Because he has attached purpose to his agenda. When you attach purpose, you will find people that will follow you. You see, that's why I don't have too many people following me. But the few people that are following me, they're following me because they know this guy is not crazy. This guy is telling the truth. He's telling the truth we don't want to hear. But I'd rather stick to him. And those, amen, who cannot stick, they say, no, this guy is saying something that uh, may just make me, in my whole world, you know, will be turned upside down. And that's the truth. I'm not going to follow him again. Because God, when you begin to come into the dream of God, he will turn your world upside down. You know why he's going to turn your world upside down? So that every baggage that he has not placed there can fall down. Then when, when everything falls down, then it will turn your life again, amen. Yes, you know, uh, to the right order. That's the truth. Do you love the truth? Do you want to hear the truth? Not many of us are ready for the truth. And that's why we don't get cleansed. That's why we don't get washed. That's why we're afraid of the water. Many of us are like dogs, afraid of water. Many of us are afraid to jump into the pool. You know why? Because we don't want to get wet. Oh, Jesus. We don't want the truth. We love what sounds like the truth. We love to be around what looks like the truth. We love to play around the peripheries of the truth. We, we love to sound like people who love the truth. We, lo we even love the company of them. Be careful of those who come around you who claim to be proclaimers of the truth. How do you know if people love the truth? Watch their lifestyle. Don't watch their message. Watch their lifestyle. It's their lifestyle that makes the difference. It's the lifestyle that makes the difference. How do you know the lifestyle? Bible says by their fruit you will know them. They are not of this world. That's what led us into all of this. They are not of this world. What separates you? From those who are out there, amen, fooled, captured by all kinds of deceit and lies. You better believe it. There's a lie out there. I was into all of this lie for years until the Lord have mercy on me. And they brought me to, to some flick of light. And I began to, as, as they show me a flick of light. You see, when you come to God, they don't give you all the light. No, they show you a flicker. Do you want it? If you want it, then you start coming. They invite you to come. You have to, you have to invest in the things of the spirit if you want to grow. They don't give you everything. No. So don't cast your, the, your pearls before the swine, lest they take it and, and, and dash it on the, on the floor and smash it. That's what people sometimes do with the truth that we give to them. The truth we give to them no longer, they no longer value it. That's why I keep saying, never you get used to the things that I'm declaring. Because if you get used to it, you put yourself in big danger. The fact that we come and declare this thing does not mean that the word is cheap. There has to be the point where you are left to chase. To chase the things of God. To run after the things of God. 
Because when you have it at your beck and call, it's a dangerous thing for you to wake up in the morning earlier and just click on your device, your computer, or open your phone. And there you have the word of God coming live to you. Some of you, maybe you're just still, you know, uh, on your bed. Maybe you're just getting up. You're on your way to the toilet. You understand? Yes, you're still sitting on the, on the, on the, on the, on the toilet. You know, you're trying to open your phone. And there you have it. The word of God is coming life to you. Or you're just trying to make your coffee. You understand? And then you don't need to drive all the way to some place to go hear the word of God. It can be a dangerous place. As much as God, amen, has allowed this to accelerate our growth. But it can be a very dangerous place. When there is no sacrifice attached, amen, to, to the things of the spirit. And that sacrifice is not how much of what you do. Sacrifice is the condition of your heart towards the things of the spirit. Jesus was standing, amen, at the point when people were giving their offering. And this woman brought a last. What she brought was equivalent to half, half a cent. There's no value in the human natural sense. There's no value to what this woman brought. But Jesus looked at her and said, she's given the best. Say, so wherever the gospel is preached, she must be remembered. While others were coming and throwing their fat offerings. I shared a scripture yesterday. I don't know if you saw it. The number of, of offerings that Solomon gave to the Lord. It's, it's, it's just, it, it, I mean, it's crazy. That's the, that's the right word. I mean, it's just mind-boggling that so much sacrifice, so much blood was shared. As an offering unto the Lord by Solomon. He understood something. He wasn't just doing that to impress God. I hope you understand that. Just follow me. I'm here and there, but just follow me. We're, we're going somewhere. The context this morning is, is we want to be sanctified. It says sanctify them by your truth. We cannot be sanctified. The word sanctified means to, to be washed, to be cleansed. We cannot be sanctified and cleansed when we trivialize the truth. When we have, when we have presumed or assumed the truth for something else. How you engage the things of God, the heart to which you engage the things of God is very, very critical. It matters to God. See, when you have the right posture of heart, there's all possibility that, you know, your, your connection with, with God and the things of God will be right. When you have, even if it's not right, God has a way of adjusting you, of correcting you. And immediately you will change. But when you have come to believe in the lie, when, you're, when you are living in a delu, de, delusion, when you have accepted the lie for the truth, only God can save you. When you live in pretense, only God can deliver you. Because you have come to believe certain things. And, and persuasion, hallelujah, yes, works with desire. You, you, you get to be persuaded by what you have come to believe and accept. And then desire, amen, goes into action. Come on. Let's read on. Thank you, Jesus. They are not of this world, just as I am not of this world. No wonder everything Jesus did, amen, contradicts the system of the day, the religious order of the day, the pharisaical order of the day. I hope you understand that when God established, you know, a word, a counsel for his people, he, 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 didn't, he didn't have in mind the things that they turned that thing to. You see, it, it's a dangerous thing for God to give us truth and we take that truth and turn it to something else. The Bible said they have they turned the truth into a lie. That, that was what amen, the, the Pharisee did. The Sadducees and all of these people who, who have come to preside over the people of God. Over, you see. And they become a proxy amen, for the Roman Empire. Did you see how religion, uh, uh, you understand, and, and the ungodly system of the world merged together. 
it was the Pharisee, amen, who 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 sold Jesus, amen, yes, to the to the Roman Empire, who took Jesus to Pilate, and then of course, Jesus was killed. These were religious, but these were people who claimed to know to know the Lord, who claimed to amen to be serving the Lord, who came who claimed to be custodians of the things of God, who claimed to be lovers of the laws of Moses. But they were blind, and the blindness was an issue of the heart. When you are blind by heart, no matter how somebody tries to tell you the truth, you will not accept it because, amen, your blindness is built on a persuasion, is built on what you have come to believe. In fact, that, that blindness was built, amen, and established on a purpose. You fight anything that does not align with what we believe, what has been passed down to us. And what has been passed down to them was the truth, but they misinterpreted the truth. You know why we misinterpret the truth or why we choose to misinterpret the truth? To suit, amen, our agenda, to continue, amen, to resource us, to continue to provide for us. Have you noticed that those who lie, who preach the lie, amen, who preach what people want to hear, all right, they get blessed. People bless them financially. But those of us who stand for the truth, who preach the truth, you hardly can be praying, God, you are God. But thank God, God is touching people. One of our sisters yesterday, just sent me a gift. Because she, God, God touched her heart. She heard, she heard my cry. And I was touching the spirit. I said, thank you, Lord. And that's the kind of giving I want. Now people give to you because they think or I, I, they do you a favor. You're not doing me a favor. In fact, your gift is a blessing to you. Not to me. Because if you don't give to me, guess what? The kingdom of God still continues to advance. Remember, I'm not running a church. So there's no offering and tithe coming for me every, every month. And so, well, oh, yeah, yeah. Now, at the end of the month, I've got 15,000 right. No. We live by faith. Thank God for those who still believe that we want to support what you're doing. Even, even, what, even if what you are saying, amen, slaps us on the, faith, on the face, that is a good slap. David said, I'd rather you slap me on the face than me to sit on the same table with my enemy. And he's laughing with me. Do you love the truth? Your action will prove if you love the truth. Your action will prove if you do love the truth. The Pharisee were the one who took Jesus and offered him. He came to save them. He came to deliver them. You know, God will, God will not disown his own. God will not disown his own. Oh, you don't like the truth. You don't want to hear the truth. Please do not connect to this channel again because you will always hear the truth and until your heart hallelujah, submit to the will of God, this truth will always haunt you. I'm not preaching. I'm not telling you this so that you can give to me. No. But giving is part of life. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. Life is about giving. So don't even let nobody lie to you. Just because some people, amen, abuse the principle of giving, and then suddenly nobody should talk about giving. No! Everything that, you, that your life represents is because somebody gave to you. Your life was given to you. Your identity was a gift. Your education is a gift. <laughs> if God, amen, I brought you into a marriage, that marriage is a gift. Your children is a gift. Your job is a gift. You didn't work for it. The Bible says, what do we have that has not been given to us? Why do we behave as if, amen, it was not a gift? Don't live as if you've got a privilege. Live as one, hallelujah, who have an understanding of what God has done. And from that order of life, amen, you bless him. All of you listening to me, amen, today, Many of you, I, maybe I met you in South Africa. Guess what? The, the ministry has been running before I met you. When you leave and when you stop giving, the ministry was con will still continue to advance because there will still be people, hallelujah, who will be supporting this work. 
That's why the truth cannot be killed. The truth cannot be shut down because we stand for the truth. Yes. We flow as the Spirit of God leads us. We flow as the Spirit of God leads us. We don't cajole people to give. We don't try to, you know, uh, uh, impress people. No, no. Let God impress your heart. And if tomorrow God, God, you feel, amen, you don't want to give to this work again because I don't think God will tell you don't give to Isaiah Phillips again. But if by tomorrow you feel you don't want to give to Isaiah, please do not give to me. Because if you do, your gift will become a curse. Did you hear what I said? Let me repeat again. So you don't think I'm, I'm making, uh, you know, that was a slip of tongue. No. If you do give to me when you don't feel like giving to me, your gift is a curse. I don't want such a gift. I want a gift that will advance what we're doing, what we stand for, what we represent. I don't want you to, I don't want you giving to me thinking that you're doing me a favor because you're not doing me a favor. Don't use your gift to hold me hostage. No. I'm as free as a bird. We declare the counsel of God. Hold your gift. Hold your offering. Hold your tithe. Whatever it is, hold it and watch God continue to advance this work. Hold it. Because before I met you, the work, I've been, I've, I've been on this journey for 30, 30 years plus. So I didn't just wake up one morning from somewhere. Oh, I feel the holy indignation of God this morning, friends. For God so loved the world that he gave. He taught us how to give. Freely have you received, freely give. Why? We are not of this world. It's the world give you something so they can get something from you. That is not the kingdom life. I told you this when I was listening to the, the message on my book on the kingdom of God. And I'm like, God, help me. Help me. You see, when you get a kingdom education, your entire view, your entire perception to life will change. You know, as I'm preaching this morning, I'm like, yes, this is the Isaiah I know. It's like I'm taking, t t telling myself, this is the Isaiah Phillips I know. This is how this man preach. Fire in his bones. This is what people know me for. When we come down, it's because we want to bring people up. But don't presume because I am down to your level. You take me for a ride. Don't, don't, you don't want to make that mistake. Because I will immediately put you where you belong. This is what the prophetic is all about. It's not capture. The true prophets are not captured. They cannot be captured. Because God has captured them. <laughs> they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. Let us sink into your spirit this morning. Because that is what will lead you to the point and the place where you, you'll be able to say, say, oh yeah, I've been compromised. I'm not of the world. In my thought, in my values, in my understanding, I am not of the world. The world may be standing on one side. I won't follow them because everybody's on that side. I will stand on the path that I belong. They say, search for the ancient path and follow it. Don't follow the voice of the world. The fact that your friend, your colleagues, your family, your brother, your sister, your uncle, everybody, amen, are into all of the Christmas sherry and whatever they do, does not mean that you also must just go like a mule and be following them. No, you've got to probe. This is the day where you need to probe. Listen, if you believe in Christmas, then find, find proof in the word of God. Prove it. Let the word of God. Oh, do we celebrate, yes, Jesus' birth? Yes, because wise men came from the east. They brought, hallelujah, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And we understand all of that. And we celebrate those process. And guess what? We don't just celebrate on the 25th. We celebrate it every day of our life. Now, why? Those who are wise are still searching. They are still tracking Christ. You have to understand that. Do you know how much capitalism is making when it comes to December particularly amen the period of where you say you buy a gift you buy all of that it's good to buy a gift but if you have to wait for 25th to buy me a gift please hold your gift because by January I need a gift by February I need a gift Jesus need a gift in March 
You say, well, I'm moved by... No, no, no. We are not of this world. The world... Listen to this. If you, if you want to understand, Catholicism define all of these things for us. And we're trying to move out of this thing. And that's why some people till today, they've gone to the extreme. They say, well, we, we no longer call it church. Now we call it ecclesia. That's some extreme. Ecclesia church is still the same. As long as the spirit, hallelujah, is the spirit of Christ. As long as you're chasing Christ. You see, oh God, help us from all of these issues, issues, issues. The issues of the kingdom are, is there. Christ is the center, is the core, is the focus. When Christ is not magnified, we will always look for all kinds of things. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like, um, it's like Adam in the garden. See, when Adam compromised, what was he looking for? Fig leaves. Many of our messages, I'm sorry to say they are fig leaves. They only pacify for a moment. By the time Christmas pass, we will look for another thing to speak about. You know, January. Okay, it's first fruit. But if time first fruit pass, then we'll look for something else just to keep the people on the on the meal, just to keep the people on the moon, just to keep the people. Yes, you, you continue to give them false hope or false expectation. That's why many people, thank God for those, of, those people that are following me, they are tired of religion. That's why I cannot come here and be preaching religion and tradition again to them. No, they want to hear the truth. We have people from different parts of the world. You will know, when, by the time I'm done with this message and I post it on our various platform, there are people who are feeding on this message from different parts of the world. So if you think what I'm just talking about is limited to you watching or limited to South Africa, and then you're, you're making a mistake. In fact, my highest viewer are from America. Many of them I don't know, but they are listening. Why? Because they know this man is talking sense and from different parts of the world. What are we saying? It's time somebody wake up and start saying things the way they are. I can't sell my bat right for a pot of pottage. Come on. I can't sell, amen. Yes, my bat right. I can't sell my destiny just because I want to live comfortable. My comfort is in Christ. And whenever I have comfort in Christ, I am comfortable. It's purpose. It's purpose. <laughs> David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper, a doorkeeper in the house of God. That's purpose speaking. Than to sing, sit among kings and priests and be eating the fat of the rams among kings and priests. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. You see, that's purpose driving you. When you have connected to a purpose, amen, that is truly connected to God's dream. You'll be satisfied. Even with 100 rand, I will be satisfied. And if tomorrow I've got, amen, 1,000 rand or, uh, you know, uh, uh, 100,000 100, rand, guess what? I will still live as if I have 1,000, you know, 1,000 rand. Like I said, someone with a purpose, if your life is driven by a purpose connected to God's dream, God's counsel, God's purpose, God's kingdom, listen to this. That purpose is what regulates everything about your life, including your finance. It's not your appetite. It's not frivolous, you know. Oh, it's Christmas. You know, I, I keep, everywhere I go, I tell people, hey, hey, don't fall into that trap. It's Christmas. Then by January, you're dealing with the debts. Particularly from this part of the world, South Africa. If only people can be so zealous with their spiritual life as, as they get zealous in Christmas time. And by now, I'm sure this nation would have been changed. If Americans can be as zealous for God as they, as they are zealous, amen, for, you know, for their holiday, America would have been transformed a long time ago. There has to be something more bigger driving us than these fringes, fringes of life, peripheries, fig leaf things. That by the evening they dry, they dry, you dry, you're left naked again. You're looking for the next fig leaf. Oh, you don't want to hear the truth. This is the truth this morning. This is the way God wants to preach sanctification to us. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he whom the Lord has put his word upon his lips. Let him speak without being afraid. Draw the line. I always tell you, let people know where you stand at every season. You see, we're about to end the season. We're about to enter another one. You draw the line. You set parameters. You set standard. Draw the line. Don't let people follow you because they just want to follow. No, they've got to have a reason. Help them to find a reason to follow. And if they don't have a reason, let them go back. As 32,000 went back in the day that Gideon was called to raise an army to fight the Midianites. 32,000 army. Though they were dressed in war, they went back home. How many of you are afraid? You would have thought when they were being trained, when they were being prepared, that they had dealt with fear. Until the man of God drew the line. How many of you out of 300,000 300, plus army? How many of you were afraid? I'm sure the jaw of Gideon would have just dropped. When he saw 32,000 of all his army, only 300 were remaining. And God said, there's still too much. You would have thought, ah, that's, that's, that's good enough. 32,000 gone back home. At least now we have, you know, 300 men. Have you watched that movie? The 300 men, the 300 guy. Yes, I love to watch movies like that. The 300. These guys are fierce. They, they look ready and prepare. They look agile. I, I feel like I could stand up, you know, just demonstrate for you. The 300, you know. Leonidas and the guys were ready to go fight. Let's go fight. <laughs> God said, these people are still not ready. Bring them to the waters. Me, I'm going to test them for you. <laughs> so you understand my philosophy of leadership. In case you hate the way I'm speaking. In case you don't like. No. I will continue to test you. I will continue to probe you. If you really want this thing. Uh, you want to go on. Elisha. You want to go with Elijah. Okay. We'll see. There are few people that. I know that God has called me. To build. To build their life. Because I tested, I tested, I tested their, their, you know, their, 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 their commitment. I tested, amen, their, their attitude. As a brother, back in the day, three years ago, they're about, oh, I want you to mentor me. I want you to build me. I want you to, I said, okay, it's fine. We'll see. After a period of time, I tested him. He failed the test. I tested him again. He failed. I tested him. I said, Sorry. It's over. Sorry, you're not ready for me. And I'm not ready for you. I don't want to waste my time. You know, one of the sisters following us, I'm not going to mention her name. She was introduced to me by a friend. In fact, I'll mention her name, Sister Priscilla. She was introduced to me by Sister Tina. I said, okay, we'll see. I said, no, this she's my friend she wants to hear this thing he said i gave out some of your material some time ago but she didn't listen she was not ready then after i think about a year there about a year she started listening to some of she said okay she's ready she wants to she wants me to mentor i said she, she really ready for me to mentor her so i tested her she didn't know i was testing her and you could ask her I said, before I even begin to say anything to you, there's a book I want you to read. First of all, you read that book. It took almost six months, if I'm not mistaken, for her to get that book because there are all kinds of issues happening. She couldn't get the book. You see, we want to raise leaders for God in this last day. It's not about, it's not about your portfolio. It's about the quality and the condition of your heart. You see, I don't mind God calling me home tomorrow. I don't mind. If God says tomorrow, Isaiah, you're done with your job on earth, I will be glad to sleep and wake up on the other side. 
I'm not saying my life is perfect, but from what God amen, has committed into my hand, I have not held back in building, in training, in equipping people in the way. Those who know me from my days as a pastor in Nigeria, they will tell you the same. I keep raising the bar. When, you, when we get to one level, I push it higher again. Many people left. They said, no, this guy is crazy. No, I'm not crazy. I'm just following, amen, the standard, the pattern, amen, of what is written in the word of God. Bring them to the waters. God said, let me test them for you. You see, with people like that, I can lay down my life for them. Because I know that they're commit committed. Committed. Tested our attitude. Tested our resolve. Tested our determination. I've only met her once. She's there in Zimbabwe. I'm here in South Africa. But we can I could track her in the spirit. That's what we're talking about. I'm not about, you know, <laughs> you know, God. no, 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 no. It's not about what you have. It's about what you need from God that I can deposit into your life. And when my job is done, you can move on. We don't have time again to waste and to play around. And this lady, she keep, she keep eating. She keep, in fact, at some point, she, I guess she was eating more than me. <laughs> because all of the materials that I asked her to read, she's read it. And I recommend a book from Watchmen. I said, she said I, 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 that back then she called me prophet. She said, prophet, I've read that book. Elder, I've read, I've read that one. I've, I said, oh, wait, wait, slow down, slow down, slow, <laughs> slow, slow down. What am I saying? I'm just saying that there is a system, there's a value. Yes, you want to go on with God. Listen, Christ called us to train, to make disciples, not to make followers, not to make church people, to make disciples so that they can function and succeed in the area, in the place he has called them, that he has put them. Not to own people, not to control them. You can ask her how my leadership has been with her. You see, there are people that want they want to go 50-50 with you. Okay, uh, meet me halfway, i meet you halfway. Sorry, that's not how we do it. You've got to put everything down on the table and say, God, I'm surrendering my life myself to you. I want to go on with you. Or maybe this is a word God is giving to some people you need to hear as you want to press into 2023. All right, may not be to me. It may be to the pastor or leader that you're following. How, how is your commitment to that person? What kind of commitment do you have? Not 50-50. I don't want to meet you halfway. No. You have to lay your own 50 down on the altar. When you have laid everything down, then God said, now you're ready. Until Priscilla was ready, I was not ready for her. But today, even if she tells me she's not ready, I say, it's too late. <laughs> you're, you're, going, you're going all the way because I've seen your heart. I know your, I know your heart. I know your desire. I know what you want. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's what we're talking about. Not, not people who... No, no. No, no. I don't want to meet... Because meeting you half-half, amen, is you coming with your baggages, is you coming with your own ideas, your own philosophy, with your own thinking, and then you are questioning everything God is demanding of you. God say, lay down. Say, I can't lay it down. This one, I own it. God say, open that door. Say, no, I'm not going to open that door. The story of my father's life is there. The story of my mother is there. The story of my aunt is there. The story of my cousin is there. The story of my boss is there. God said, open all the door and let me in. No, I won't open. God said, okay, keep your door. You move on. You're not ready for God. When you're ready for God, amen, you will come naked. You see, moving on with God is vulnerable. Tomorrow, next, next, next year, we're going to be doing some teaching, amen, on building leaders. Leaders who will take the things of God earlier forward. Now weaklings. Bring them to the waters. He said, God said, I'm going to test them. Gideon, you think you, you think you know the people. <laughs> you bring them to the waters. Let me test them for you. Some of you don't even know that God is already testing you. And you are failing woefully. 
He will test you in the area of your commitment, in the area of your relationship. He will test you in the area, amen, of your sense of, you know, trust. He will test your faith. Yes. I'm still going to recommend the material that I wrote some years back. Yes. Tribulation. The principle, amen, that allow us to understand and to enter, you know, the order of the, of the kingdom of God. Because many of us have different idea of what the kingdom of God is. But tribulation is the standardized, you know, value that God uses. God will bring all kinds of things to test you. Amen. Yes. God doesn't tempt. He tests us. Say, bring them to the waters. Let me test them. You know what? They will always test us in the area of our vulnerability. They will test us in the area of our passion. They will test us in the area, amen, of our desire, of our need. Yes. God will use your need. God knows, amen, that I have need, financial need. So he will continue to test me. Yeah, he tests me. I pass the test. I move on. And guess what? If they keep testing one area, you keep failing there. You don't move on. They don't say, ah, okay, it's fine, it's fine. Let's, let's carry on. We'll be dealing with it as we, as we journey. No, no, no. That's not how the things of God work. You will remain, amen, in that point. That test may be coming from different shape and different, you know, dimensions and whatever, amen, but it's, it's the same thing. By the time you go here and there, you still come back to the same spot. You never move on. Because there's no carryover in the kingdom of God. You have to pass the class to move to the next. And those who don't tell you the truth, amen, they're basically deceiving you. But when you come to Isaiah, when you listen to me, you hear. God wants to build a quality of men and women who are truly ready, who are kingdom branded. The kingdom of God is the essence of our life and is the essence of our existence. Is the reason why we're doing what we're doing. Not, not to have 10,000 people fo if following us. No, no, no. No. Not to be known and be popular on social media. No. What is driving us is the kingdom of God. Is the harvest. Is people coming into the Lord. Coming into Christ. Coming into truth. Is people being free from lie. From deceit. Self-delusion. You are the captain of your own ship. You are the God of your own castle. You want to do your own thing. All right, then you just use God and the things of God as a whitewash to wash your idea. No, it doesn't work like that. Sorry. The rain is falling. All the whitewash we've, we've painted our walls, amen, are coming off. The God is sending his rain. They're washing. People will see who we truly are. When people look at you, may they see Christ and not something else. When the people look at you, may they see Christ and not something else. Not, 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 not traditions. Not lies, not deceit. Not the philosophies of this world. May they see Christ. May Christ be magnified in you and through you because Christ has been formed in you. That's what we're talking about. Nothing else. <coughs> Excuse me. Are you, are you feeling me this morning as I feel the Holy Spirit stir my heart? See, a true preacher, when a true preacher preaches the word of God, it will create enemies or he will make friends. I don't want to create enemies. I want to make friends. But I cannot avoid it. Because people would dislike what I'm saying. You know why? Because their own view about the things of God is not the same. God doesn't have two views. They only have one view. And that view is Christ and his kingdom. They are not of this world just as I am not of this world. Then he went further 17. Sanctify them by the truth. Are you being sanctified by the truth? All I've been talking about you know for the past 40 maybe 50 minutes. Amen. It's the truth sanctifying you. God just dropped that in my spirit. 
Because I'm still saying, oh, let's go back to 17 now so I can talk about sanctification. God just spoke that to my, you know, to my mind now. But you've been sanctifying the people. That's what you've been doing. You see, when a preacher comes and give you the undiluted word, what that word does, amen, is cleanse you. It purifies you. You feel, you, you feel clean. You feel clean. You feel purified. You feel washed. You may not like it. You don't have to like it. You know, there are times you wait, you, you know, you want to go to bed. You don't feel like, you're so tired. You don't feel like, you know, having a shower, having a bath. But, but you say to yourself, ah, I, I, if I really want to have a good sleep, I think I need a shower. You, you drag yourself to the bathroom. You drag yourself away. Yes. But after a while, you're under that shower or you sit, in, you know, in, in that, in that, uh, 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 you know, bathtub. Suddenly you begin to feel refreshed. Yes. That's why you have to force yourself. You have to bring yourself, amen, to the pool of God's word. Because naturally, normally, your flesh is going to fight it. No, I don't want, I don't want to have a bath. You see, I some children fight having a bath. Except for my son, Zadok loves to bath. Hey, oh, one moment you take him to the bathroom, uh, uh, he's already throwing his, you know, his toys and whatever into the bathtub. Some children don't like, no. You see, you've got to love the water. You've got to love the word of God. You've got to want to. All right? At least that's something I, I developed. Even, even if I don't like the preacher, all right? And I hardly don't, I'm, I hardly find myself in a situation where I don't like, you know, except maybe the person is very compromised. If, if, it's, if it's the truth, I want to hear it. I want to listen to it. Oh God, help us to be part of the few who are still proclaiming and declaring. People may hate us for it. They may dislike us. They may decide to withhold their gift and their support. Oh, but may we be part of those who will continue to sound the trumpet of your word. Yes, from the rooftop, from the mountaintop. May there be a company of people on earth who will continue to sound the alarm. Who will continue to proclaim the word of God. Who will continue to declare the counsels of God without reservation. My expectation is of the Lord. My, my expectation is not man. It's not you. My expectation is not a person. It's not a system. You are not my provider. God is my provider. Let me repeat it again. You are not my provider. You are not my source. God is my source. God is my provider. And therefore he is the one who has called me to go and speak his word. Go. Tell my people. Say, go to the lordship of the house of Israel. You think that is going to be palatable? God said, Ezekiel, I'm sending you to a rebellious house. Many of you listening to me, you still have a rebellious spirit. You know what that means? You choose what you want to hear from what, amen. <laughs> you don't want to. Ah, you, you sit on the table and you and pick. Ah, I like that one. I don't like this one. When you come to the table of God, you eat all the meal they give to you. I'm sending you to a rebellious house. That's the people of God he's calling. In fact, God said they will not listen to you, but I'm still sending you to them. Why are they rebellious? Because they are, they've made up their mind what they want to believe. No wonder they will remain in that struggle. 2023, they will still be in that struggle. You know why? Because they have refused to follow the wisdom of God. Wisdom is speaking. Wisdom say, come my way. Let me show you the way out. They say, no, I can't follow that path. It doesn't sound right. That doesn't look right. That doesn't befit my personality. Huh? Your personality? Okay. <laughs> you will stay there. You have to come to the end of yourself. For the day of the Lord to emerge in your life. You have to come to the end of yourself. For the door of the Lord to be open for you to access the things of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's a two-edged sword, friends. Sanctify them. 
Jesus called his disciples and he was washing them. He was sanctifying them. He came to Peter, who thought he knew. Who taught me, ah, I'm a man of revelation. After all, I'm the one, hallelujah, who caught the revelation of Jesus. You are Christ, the son of the living God. Hallelujah. It was me that Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my father in heaven, I have proximity. Jesus said, Peter, come, let me wash your feet. <laughs> Peter said, no, you're not going to wash my feet. <laughs> not me. Me, I'm okay. Me, I am okay. No, Jesus, wash my feet. No, I'm cleansed. I'm washed. Jesus said, if I can't wash your feet, then you have no part in me. There are dust you gather when you walk the road. Dust of pride, dust of, you know, resentment, anger, hatred, dust, dust of, you know, of, of, of iniquity. Sometimes dust of lust, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. You gather dust. As long as you are in ministry, you will gather dust. Thus see the Lord, as long as you are in ministry and you want to serve God, you will gather dust. As long as you're a man, as long as you're a woman, as long as you're a, you're a father, as long as you're a wife, you will gather dust. Come Peter. Jesus got himself. He got water. He stooped low. <laughs> Peter couldn't take it. He could not just complain. No, 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 master. When Jesus then said, if I can't wash your feet, then you have no part of me. Peter said, <laughs> then, Kuku gave me a bath to wash my entire being. Uh -uh. Jesus said, that's not what we're talking about. He who has had the bath does not need a second bath. You are born again, Peter. You are my follower. But there are things that happens to us on the journey. There are things that happens to us in January, in February, March. Yes, there are issues, challenges. There are, you know, quarrels. There are, you know, all kinds of, you know, misunderstanding. All kinds of, you know, things. You, you, come on, you know what I'm talking about. You can begin to, you know, mark those things that happen, you know. Yeah, uh, some of them you are still keeping. You have not let go of that issue. Yeah, that one, yes, you're still keeping it. Jesus said we need to wash that. If you're going to enter the next thing, not just enter 2023, if if you're going to enter the next prophetic season of the Lord for your life, you need to be washed. Or else, let me let me quickly bring, bring this out. Or else, or else, you are not going to enter this door. They won't give you the access key. Even if they give you the access key, you can't come in there. Because the guards will not allow you to come in. You see, in the Orient, when when you are invited to a banquet or to you know to a, a very important uh, 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 event they have servants who, who are there the you know because they their roads are you know are not are not are not hard so but it's the tradition that the servants are there to to wash the feet of the of the guest mm -hmm. i know you, you had a bath you had a bath you had a bath but from where amen you began to journey. Listen, friends. That's why it's important that we put into context the gospel of the kingdom that we preach. In the journey towards the things of God, there are all kinds of things that are going to happen to us. That's why we keep saying the end does not justify the means. The means justifies the end. How we journey, how we allow ourselves to be constantly Amen. Purify, sanctify is what matters to God. Are you getting this? They said, sorry, we need to wash you. We need to wash you. And you come and say, oh, sorry, no, 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 I'm okay. They say, sorry, we're not going to allow you in. Because that's the, that's the rule, that's the standard. We're not going to allow you in. You want to enter into this thing. You want to enter this dimension. You're going to pollute. You're going to create pollution. You're going to compromise. Amen. Everyone that is in. That's why certain people. The Bible says we should be careful. Because they have sneaked in unawares. 
He said, you have among you certain brothers that have been compromised. They did not allow their foot to be washed. So when they came in, they came in with pride. Uh, they came in. That's why we, 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 we call, we say kingdom community. We're doing kingdom. This is kingdom. But you see people manifesting arrogance, pride, ungodliness. You'll be wondering. You see people, amen, their eyes is like this to money. You'll be wondering, but how did you enter here? I thought you, I thought you should have dealt with this thing, you know, at the first day, at the outer court. I thought you should have. No, no, no. How did you come to the... They say, friends, how did you get in here earlier with, with the wrong attire, without the right code of dressing? How did you get in here? Did you read that in the scripture? Friends, how did you get in here? Did you not get the memo? Did you not see the dress code? Did you not allow, yes, the servant to wash your feet at, you know, at the gate before you enter? How did you come in here and compromise the things? They say, bundle him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. Oh. Is somebody tracking what the Lord is saying to us? All that a pride and arrogant spirit, you've got to get rid of it so you can enter. You can enter. <laughs> you want to enter through the eye of a needle, you've got to unburden yourself. You've got to undress yourself. You've got to remove the fig leaf. Ah, you want to cover the thing. You've got to remove the fig leaf. Come as you are so they can cover you with the glory. You think you know yourself? Wait until they bring you to a certain dimension. You begin to realize, oh my word. Yeah. Our journey of 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 sanctification is a continual one. Sanctify them by the truth. The truth at this point is symbolic, amen, of water. At some point, the truth is symbolic, amen, of the blood of the Lamb. The truth at some point is is is, is a symbol of the oil. But at this point, it's a sanctification of water. Amen. It's called baptizo. Baptizo. They have to baptize you into certain truth. They, that truth will sanctify you and make you ready. That's why you read the book of Hebrew. There are, there, are, there are more than one types of baptism. The baptism is to prepare us to enter the next dimension of the kingdom. Every stage, every gate of, of new realities in the kingdom, we need to be sanctified to enter or else you're going to compromise the things of the spirit. You climb one height in the things of God and suddenly you develop this idea I have arrived. They say, sorry. Ah, when you come to the next level, you are going to see things from a new play. It's like a different world entirely. That's why you need to be born again, again and again. No, we get born again once, but that born again, again and again, amen, is a continual process, amen, of being sanctified, of being washed, of being purified. It's like a baby. Yes, you get, the Bible says without, without you becoming like a baby, you cannot enter the realities of the kingdom of God. You see, the fact that you have entered through the gate does not mean that you've accessed the entire dimension of the estate. No. See, that's a mistake many of us make. Oh, I was, like I told you, I was reading this, my book that I wrote on the kingdom. In fact, I'm going to, I saw that a few people have been downloading it, amazingly. On our, you know, on our website, it's free, free. We don't sell it. That's why I keep saying, even, even if you don't bless me, guess what? I've done enough for me earlier to continue to have to finish my assignment and for those who have blessed me I can't even begin to say you're already blessed because you know that because you've triggered a principle 
he who waters shall be watered. I was reading this book. I myself who wrote it, I was saying to myself, Lord Jesus, this is deep. God, this is just, yes. That is what, amen, a true book should do. Me that wrote it, I'm like, oh God, kingdom. The first thing we call the kingdom of God. We're still very far from it. Yeah. You can go to my site and download it's free. We don't charge. The books that we're gonna be releasing next year, we won't charge for it until the Lord speaks otherwise, but he has still not said anything. For a few years now, amen. God has I've been telling people, no, it's free. So how do you survive? God provides. And he does provide. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. As you sent me into the world, I've also sent them into the world. The same world that he said they are not of. We are not of this world, but he's sending us into this world. Friends, if you are being sent into the world, you better believe that you need amen, the ministry of continuous sanctification because the world has a way of staining you. The world system, they have a way of staining you. Basically, the world represents dust, flesh. Didn't we, didn't, we, didn't we come out of this world, out of the flesh? Amen. We came out of the dust of the world. Jesus shaped us and formed us from the dust. That was before the dust was cursed. That was before the dust was compromised. So there's something about us that is always gravitating. Amen. To the flesh, to the world. That's why you've got to maintain the life of the spirit. But you know that sometimes we just miss it. And you find yourself sliding down. You find yourself in a place you're not supposed to be. And you quickly get up. Oh, yeah, that's important. But you need to be sanctified. You need to be cleansed. You don't get stained and continue with that stain. No, you need to be cleansed. And Jesus made room for us. Because he's sending us to the world. When you're sent, listen to this, friends. When you're sent to the world, you don't walk on the air. <laughs> this is a spirit that must make contact with the ground. When you make contact with the ground, you're bound to gather dust. And they have made a provision, amen, to mitigate that by what? By cleansing, by purification. So Peter said, no, you're not, oh, no, no, no. Jesus said, you don't understand this thing. You may have a deep revelation about who I am, but there are basic things that you need to know that is part of the process of our journey. So Peter said, okay, I understand now. No, you don't understand. Because if you understand, it will say, I need a total bath. Jesus said, you don't need a total bath. You already had a bath. That's not what I'm talking about. You can't go from one extreme to another. <laughs> you, you, you can't go from one extreme. That, that's what we do in, Christ, in, you know, you know, in, in the church, in Christendom. We go from one extreme to another. Have you seen? No, no, no. We're not part of the church again. Then what we're part of God knows what? No. We've got to maintain the center core. We've got to maintain balance. The center is what we're searching for. Christ is the center. That's why, if you want to know, I'm not easily carried away by all these extremes of the kingdom people are preaching today. The kingdom is not extreme. The kingdom is Christ. And when your eyes is focused on Christ and Christ, hallelujah, amen, Christ becomes a philosophy, the ideology that guides, that motivates, that, that instructs, amen, your, your motivations, your life. Guess what? You will always live to please God. And the truth about Christ, amen, are documented. And you can't tell me that we have practiced all that is documented in the word of God. Somebody says, oh, no, 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 no. You see, many, many of the things that is in the word of God, you know, have been compromised. I said, well, that's why you have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> when the Spirit of God comes, he will tell you if that is compromised or not. The Spirit will teach you. The Spirit will remind you. And that Spirit is the Spirit of truth, is the Spirit of holiness, is the Spirit earlier that purifies and sanctifies us. You see, when you hear something that is not true, the Holy Spirit immediately will trigger Amen. That button in your heart. Is, uh, 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 pa, 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 pa. But you see, if you don't have 
the basic knowledge, the basic understanding of the word of God in your heart. The Holy Spirit has nothing to work with. Hallelujah. Sanctify them by, your, by the truth. Do you love the truth as I round up? Do you want the truth? Are you a passionate lover of the truth? Or you, you love the truth when it suits you? You love the truth all right, when you have something yes, to gain from it. You love the truth when it enhances you alone. But when the truth challenges, ah, no, 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 I don't want that one. No, sorry. You've got to eat the whole loaf. You've got to eat the entire meal. The truth is all encompassing. The truth will deal with every area of your life, every area of your representation. Yes. You have to love the truth that deals with your home, your family, your business, your career, your job, your ministry, people around you, relationship, friends. You have to love the truth that speaks to every area of life. You can't have truth in one area and then you're doing your own thing on the other side. That's not the truth. Say, bring them to the waters. The truth will lead you to the water to sanctify you. And when you come out of the water, I tell you, the Bible says when Jesus came out of the water, the heavens open up. And the voice came. This is my beloved son. That's what happens. When you are sanctified, amen, not only do you get to be approved of heaven, you get to be affirmed by the Father. Friends, as we get ready to move to us 2023, and the Lord begins to speak to us that we need to offer ourselves at the altar, at the place of cleansing and washing, let us at this moment in time begin to discard, yes, the issues of yesterday. Amen. The issues of the past. You want to enter, amen, this new day, this new season, amen, light. No weight, no baggages. No weight, no baggages. Put them away. Some of them, in fact, you need to throw them in the fire. This one thing I do, I forget the things that are behind me. Yes, I press towards the things that are before me. You want to press to us, but you can't press if there are all kinds of issues, issues in the mind, in the thoughts. Yeah, yeah. You think about this. You, 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 you have all kinds of motive and agenda. Maybe he's talking about me. He's preaching. No, no. If you think this thing that I'm saying impact your life, then I'm talking about you. I'm not afraid to tell you. And you know I'm not afraid to confront people. No, I'll tell you. But guess what? I don't have anybody in mind. I'm just preaching as the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lead me and motivate me. Because that's what a prophet does. A prophet does not wait for an event before it triggers things in the Spirit. Huh? We don't preach because there's an event. We preach because, amen, we, 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 we trigger the event. Hallelujah. Yes, that's what we do. We, we go ahead and we see into the spirit and we speak the mind of God. Yes, Jesus always do that. He said, why do you think this in your heart? Why do you say this in your heart? Why do you, why do you doubt in your heart? He has, before, amen, they spoke their mind. Jesus already saw it. He knew. Hallelujah. So, so I don't need to wait for an event before I, no, 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 no. You have to preempt. I'm a strategist. I am a strategist. You see, I preempt things before they happen. I, I prepare a safe landing before impact. Did you hear me? I prepare a safe landing before an impact. I can see into the future. I know what is about to happen. I know if this happened, this is the next thing that's going to happen. I can see that. And that's what I want to build into you. So you are not captured by event. You are not, you are not at the mercy of event, of people, of situation. So whatever happens to you tomorrow, you are ready and you are prepared. Nothing should happen to you, amen, that catches you on, you know, unprepared. Catches you off guard. Ah, I didn't know. No, you should know. You should know what is coming. You should know what is coming. Jesus knew who was going to betray him. He was speaking in parable. Nobody got it. He said, even the one that dipped, amen, his bread in the same soup that I'm eating. 
Still others did not know that he was talking about Judas. Because they could not imagine Judas to do such a thing. But he knew. The entire... <coughs> excuse me. The entire life <coughs> of Jesus, his ministry was prophetic by design. That's why when we talk about the prophetic, we look at the life of Christ. I'm not looking at events. <coughs> I'm not looking at who is coming. The Antichrist is coming. I'm not looking at, you know, 666. No, Christ is the very definer of the prophetic. He's the spirit of the prophetic. I hope you love some, some of those teachings we did in the past on the prophetic. Hopefully we'll be able to do more in, 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 the, in the coming year. God, help us to see these things. And be ready and be prepared. <clears throat> Begin to prepare yourself for what is coming. Begin to pray yourself into what is coming. Begin to align yourself, amen, to the spirit of, amen, 2023. <clears throat> Don't wait for January before you step into 2023. Begin to pray. Begin to align your heart, your mind, your home, your family, amen, your colleagues, amen, your, 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 anyone helping you, amen, in, in the things of life, ministry, whatever it is, begin to pray together. Let your spirit begin to speak into each other. Yes. Don't go to Thessalonica like Demas. Don't take holiday. I say, uh, Demas have left me. Having loved this world, he's gone down to Thessalonica. What am I saying? You can go on holiday, but your mind is not on holiday. You can be on the beach with your family and your mind is tracking. The, the things of the spirit. That's why you've got to have a family who understand the grace and the call of God upon your life. And this is not just about fivefold ministry. Amen. Whatever God has called you to do, people around you should understand that and they should give you the space. It's a, it's a difficult thing when people around you do not understand the burden and the grace, amen, of God upon your life in terms of the advancement of his purpose. And every minute they want you to be there watching, looking at them, amen. It's a, it's, it can be very, very dangerous and challenging. People around you must know that you need space. I'm speaking to those, maybe called to ministry, you've been called to ministry, or you're preparing to go into ministry. You need space. Listen to this. Devotion is about giving God time your time listen there's nothing like uh, uh, you, you've got to balance you know between serving God and your family no there's no 50-50 when it comes to the things of God your family must know that you've been called if you're called that, that requires sacrifice if people in the natural realm could understand that how much more people in the spirit If the Mandelas of this world could sacrifice their life and their time, yes, for the destiny of their nation, politically, how much more those of us in the things of the Spirit? Every minute, you must be there. You must be smiling and watching everybody. You must be, oh, it's, 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 you know, this is a festive time now. It's family time. Who says it's family time? It's kingdom time. It's God's time. When you are sand out with the, with the mandate of protecting a nation as a soldier, you don't have a holiday. You know that. You go for an holiday. Yes, you've got times to. Yeah, but you can be called. <laughs> oh, come on. We don't. We don't want that. Many of us have a political mindset. That's why the things of God we can't drive them. We can't drive the things of God because we have a political mindset. We have a democratic mindset. Do you know that on the 25th, there are soldiers, amen, who will be on guard, who will be watching, who will be protecting this country? Who are the brothers, amen? That's where they'll be celebrating their whatever Christmas you call it, with guns, amen, watching. Who goes there? Because listen, when everybody's jubilating and celebrating, hallelujah, glory, that's when the enemy wants to sneak in. The enemy look at your most vulnerable season. Listen, for Christians, for believers, for kingdom people, this period in time is the most vulnerable time. Because you would have let down your guard. You put down your head. Come on, let's jolly, jolly. Hey, come on. A chicken and, you know, bra and all of these. <laughs> Cake. You would have eaten yourself to stupor. Drink yourself to stupor. Everything is just going. Yeah, 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 yeah. The enemy say, look at them fools. He comes in. When men are sleeping. I thought I was done. I'll be done now. <laughs> he sneaks in. 
Those who sleep, sleep in the night. Those who sleep, sleep in the night. We're not like them that sleep. So that scripture quickly, let me show you. Then I'm done. Amen. Yes. We have to be awake. We have to understand the nature of the days that we have been called into. We have to, we have to be prepared. We have to be ready. Hallelujah. Where's that scripture again? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Or maybe we should just round up because of time. I've seen the scripture. I just saw it now. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. It says, so then let us not sleep as others do. Friends, in this period of December, people will be sleeping. Pastors, apostles, prophets will be sleeping. You know what? Uh, it's holiday. How do you define holiday? How do you track your holiday? When the world is celebrating, that's not the time you celebrate. That's the time you must be on the watch. That's the time you... Listen, I'm not saying be weird. I'm not saying... You, you, can, you can be with your family, but you're tracking. You're tracking. Amen. Your, your GPS, hallelujah, is tracking. Your, 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 your radar is tracking the things of the Spirit. You're alert. You're alive. Amen. You see what's going on. You know? It's, it's like this guy in the CIA. You've got a family, but, you, but you're doing one thing. You're living, amen, to protect your nation. If you have to quickly go to the toilet, amen, and make some calls, you know, and, and make some, you know, coordinations, you have to do that quickly. Why? Because, amen, you must make sure that the enemy does not take advantage of the holiday. That's what I'm talking about. Don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. No, Jesus was born. Not even Herod was aware <laughs> that the king had been born. <laughs> Let me round up. <laughs> Not even Herod was aware that the king had been born. He didn't get the memo. He didn't. He couldn't pick it up. He said, "Who is who?" They were all hitting their head all around. You see, God is a strategist. He said, go look for him. Where you find him, bring me words. <laughs> he was shaking to his boots. He could not believe it. Another king born? In this place that I'm ruling, seeing over. Oh, yeah. King, you live, oh king, live forever. <laughs> but another king has been born today in Bethlehem. Hallelujah. We must not be ambushed. Thank you, my dear sister. <laughs> Herod was ambushed, yes. He was caught with his paint on, you know, on, on, you know, on the floor. He, who? King? And you guys have picked this thing. And you've been journeying for three months to come to this point. And I'm still presiding and another king has been born in, in this realm. <laughs> now you understand. When I say we need to have a military mentality as a people of God. We need to have a military mentality. We need to have a judicial mindset. We need to have the mind of an economist. We need to have a scientific mind. Not just a religious mind. We need to have a theological mind. Theology is not religion. We learn about the things of God. We need to have a, man, a strategic financial analyst mindset. Don't become frivolous and spend money anyhow. You must know how to trade in Babylon. You must know how to carry things and move things. You must know the, the, the principle of investment. Don't spend money. Don't buy things that will not add value to you in this period in time. Don't buy things for your children that will not add value to them. That will not increase them. 
that will not develop them, that will not give them a sense of motivation. Don't buy things that will dull their mind. Don't, 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 don't encourage them to just fix their eyes on games throughout amen, the holiday. Sometimes shut down the game. Don't let them program the mind of your children. These are free truths. Free love we receive, freely we give. Be alive, be alert. Friends, I'm done this morning. Yes, my dear sister, it's kingdom time. Bless you. This is kingdom time. And we must know what that means. If it's kingdom time, then we must truly be dressed ready in accordance to the timing of the Lord. Thank you so very much, everyone, this morning. I can't read through all of your uh, um, response and comments, but I'll definitely read them later on. Oh, thank you, my dear sister. A different kind of leadership, yes. A different kind of leadership that I have never seen and experienced before. Thank you so very much, Mr. Priscilla. Sorry, I had to catch you on, a, on you know, on guard, on prepare this morning. I just had to throw that in because I thought, amen, that is something that others needs to need to learn from. Right? And we bless God for what God is doing in your life. Do not be discouraged. Continue to encourage yourself and build that which the Spirit of the Lord, yes, has deposited in you. And let God's intention be fulfilled. Yes, the beauty of our treasure all right it's not always in the outside packaging uh -uh. in fact when you look at the outside it's just but a clay jar <laughs> but there are treasures amen in the earthen vessel in the clay jar all right so only those who can see into you will know what you carry anyone who looks out who looks at you on the outside ah, what what is this one? Who is this one? What does he carry? Well, God likes amen, to hide his, 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 his treasure, yes, in earthen vessel. And that's why it's important sometimes we need to remind ourselves who we are, what we carry, and what God is doing in our life so that we don't think that we are disadvantaged because we don't have or because we find ourselves in some tight, difficult situation. No. And this one too will pass away. Let Christ be glorified. Thank you so very much, every one of you this morning that have been a blessing and uh, 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 been a blessing to this work and of course to this uh, uh, emphasis that we have been looking at. We've been dealing with, amen, God's concept of sanctification. Yes, God is awakening us. This is what we've been talking about, amen. This is part of our Kingdom Life devotional series. We'll continue to do this uh, in the coming year, yes. God is waking us up. God is waking us up. And when he wakes you up from something, don't go back and sleep. Amen. Be awakened and continue to hold on to his will. Continue to hold on to amen, his counsel. And let that which you have been given become part and parcel of your life in building the next order amen, of God's counsel for your life. Continue to represent God wherever you are. If you're celebrating with your family uh, uh, this, this weekend, uh, uh, please do that, amen, with a sense of uh, uh, readiness, sincerity. I tell you, all kinds of crazy things happen, amen, in this period in time uh, uh, of Christmas and all kinds of quarrel and, 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 and you know, old issues well up, you know, particularly in, in homes and families where, you know, the love of God is not rooted. So don't let people push you to that point where you start saying things you're not supposed to say because the enemy is going to use whatever means and method. Amen. Yes. Remember, the enemy has just one agenda and that is to bring you down. So be careful. All right. You're with family. You're celebrating. If, if, if you don't need to say anything, don't say anything. And if you're going to say something, Please watch your word. In fact, I want you to see my face while I'm saying this. Please watch your word. All right? Watch your word. Amen. Don't be caught. Yes. Uh, 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 saying or declaring things you're not supposed to say. Don't, don't, don't find yourself in a position of quarrel. Yes. The enemy has always used the family to divide society. Don't let your family in this period in time become an instrument of division. All right? Go be part of your family. Celebrate together. Amen. Share the love of God. Tell them if, they, if, they, if they're in the position to listen. 
Why, amen? This season is important. Let them know. Let them understand, amen? And if they're not willing, all right? Just if you know that they're not ready and willing, pray that God will send somebody across their path. But don't be part of anything that will trigger, you know, a, a, a offense. That's the word I'm looking for. Be, be watchful, be careful of the spirit of offense, particularly, you know, in, in festive period like this, particularly in Christmas, all right? Yes, people can be eating, but there are all kinds of offense, there are all kinds of things going on. Yeah, that uncle did not greet that person. That person said this thing, you know, three years ago that, you know, you want to stay away from anything, amen, that will cause issues, yes, in your life that will hinder, that will sow a seed of discord. No, be a promoter of love. Be a promoter amen of truth and grace amen and if people are not ready for it don't force it on them uh, don't don't use this period and say I'm, I'm i'm gonna win everybody to christ if you don't have that opportunity pray ask the lord to send people you know some some part of your family will not listen to you some people in your family will not listen to you but they will listen to somebody else so let wisdom guide you let wisdom instruct you this is a powerful point that i'm sharing right now have you noticed that amen, most, most divisions that we see in family, they happen all right, in periods of you know, festi you know, festive time. Most divisions. In fact, many people, they leave the place you know, more divided. Because we try to do things in the flesh. We try to carry out things in the flesh. Uh, some, you know, we want to please them by force. And then they stain us. You feel, you feel betrayed. You feel, amen, uh, 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 you have been violated. Your values have been violated. You know, uh, if you know you're not ready, amen, to be part of certain gatherings, don't go there. That's my advice for you. All right? You don't need to pay me for all this advice. Don't go there. All right? Because you know, Yes, what's going to come out of it? All right? But if you feel, you sense in your spirit that, okay, I think I need to be here. Listen, if you're not there, you can still be part of them next year. You understand? Let wisdom guide you. Wisdom is the principal thing that we need in this season in time. Wisdom, let it guide you. Let it lead you. All right? Don't let, you know, your feelings and your emotions, all right? Don't let a feeling or an emotion that will leave you even more wounded. Many people are going to live more wounded. And this is not what I'm saying. I'm just giving you realities because all humans are the same. Humans are the same. Some people, they just want to use this period to prove a point that yes, they've arrived. You know, against those who are still struggling. You know that in family there are divisions. There is no other place, amen, that I know in society where divisions, amen, is promoted, disparities is promoted than families. Oh, come on. Any one of these days, we'll, we'll do a teaching on this. What kind of family do you have? All kinds of issues. Some of our families are still dealing with ancestral issues. And that spirit brings, you know, as we come together, that spirit is not well just because one uncle said something. And you that maybe you are the only one that God has blessed, God has given certain edge, you, you know certain things. Ah, then all eyes are on you. Okay, we'll see. Let's see. Let's see. And they're waiting for, just like they were waiting for Jesus. <laughs> and God help you say the wrong thing. Ooh, everybody pounds on you. <laughs> Sister Tina, I, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Everybody pounds on you. And you're like, oh my, what, what have I done? Now, what did I do? What did I say? No, because... <laughs> Excuse me, I want to preach on family <coughs> because <laughs> you <laughs> you are the scapegoat. Amen. <laughs> That's why sometimes God will say, leave your family for this season in time until God has given you a voice. God has given you a grace. When you when 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 you speak, one of these I'm, I, I need to preach about family because. You know, we leave family behind. We talk about kingdom. Kingdom starts with our family. You have unbel unbelievers in your family. You have unbelieving believers in your family. You have families, all right, who are into all kinds of fetish things. People, they are members of your family, but they are into all kinds of things. They've gone to that, uh, God knows who, on the mountain. They've got to that woman by the stream. They've, they come with all kinds of things. I'm telling you, in the family, particularly... Um, let me not even say among the black family. It happens everywhere. Even among the whites. 
Just that the way they carry it out, the way they do their thing may be different. But we, because we are all fallen human beings, fallen nature. So this is where wisdom, amen, must guide you. Wisdom must lead you. Don't leave the place feeling, hey, why did I even go there? Why? Why? Huh? Why? Why did I go to that, uh, you know, uh, family uh, uh, lunch, you know, lunch? And why? Why? I should have just stayed in my house, eat my food. <laughs> Particularly if you're going to one uncle's house to eat, everybody's meeting at that uncle's house. And you know that uncle, you know that uncle. So you better pray it up. You better pray it up. You better and time yourself. The moment you begin to see things, amen, heating up, excuse yourself. You want to guard what you're carrying. That's what I'm talking about, friends. Amen? I'm done. This is just a bonus. God is adding to what <laughs> God has given us, given us this morning. This is just a bonus. Just take your bag and excuse yourself. You're guarding something. Don't let somebody punch, amen, and deflate your spirit and deflate, yes. I know I'm going to show them. Now I'm kingdom. Eh, I can tell you because see, I've, I've seen all of this, even from my own family, growing up, develop. I've seen. So you think you're a pastor, huh? You think you're the one, you, you think you, you, you want to be a pastor, huh? Okay. The Bible says, a prophet is without honor, except in his own household, except in his own family. So be careful. Be careful. Alright? They invite you to spite you. The other said, they invite you to spite you. Let me repeat that. I guess that's a word from the Lord. They invite you to spite you. Don't, don't follow your emotion. Follow your spirit. If you have the spirit of God, God, should I be there? Do you want me to go there? Because listen, families are wonderful people, but they can be also, you know, they, they can be a they can be a tool. <laughs> oh, come on. Somebody say, oh, maybe what's this talking about? Well, I'm speaking as a prophet. So don't and don't tell me, oh, he doesn't like family. Oh, wow, you don't understand. Wake up. Truth. May the truth set us free. May you start learning to build your own family in the right spirit. Because every family has got a spirit. They've got something, an objective, something they are promoting. Something they most families are suffering two things. Insecurity or you know, over bloated, you know, a uh, uh, self-esteem. Over bloated self-esteem. Don't you know who we are? We are the we are the Akintolas. So we you want to prove a point to everybody. You make the loudest noise. Or some are just suffering from, you know, insecurity, low self-esteem. They've been beaten down, family beaten down, all kinds of things. Huh? Come on, let's be free. Christ came to set us free. The context of our salvation also amen, gets to be mirrored in the kind of family that we have. Alright? God gave you a family for a reason. Jesus had a family, was born to a family, and for a reason. And you are not, you are, you understand the kind of family Jesus came from. Alright? And he showed us what family is. But we'll pray for the salvation and redemption of our family. Friends, I love you all. God bless you. This is basically two hours we have done this morning. May the Lord continue to perfect his grace in your life. May you have a wonderful uh, uh, um, holiday, if you will, Christmas celebration. Whatever you're doing, amen, may the Lord continue to guide you and lead you. May he perfect his will in your life. May his goodness, amen, and his love continue to motivate you. Let love motivate you. Love by principle. Love by divine objective, amen. Let love guide you. And may your life continue to be enriched in every area. May all that you desire for this season and for the next one be yours. May God provide for you. May you not lack anything good. May the Spirit of the Lord, amen, continue to perfect you. We've been dealing with the awakening of the Spirit and the sanctification of God's Word. Love you all. Have yourself a wonderful day. Bye-bye.